welcome back. Um, today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about feminist reads. Um, I think that uh, books about feminism and books about women's rights and sexism and everything surrounding that often get a bad rap and so I wanted to recommend a few that I've read and loved and felt empowered by um, and all that kind of thing. So the, the whole idea for this video was um, spurred from the fact that I read uh, Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay. I'd been wanting to read this one for a while. Um, I've got this physical copy of it, but I also listened to this on audiobook, which I downloaded from the library. And although this is a book about feminism, she talks about the idea of being a bad feminist and the kind of stereotypical feminist that people have in their heads and how that isn't actually what feminine feminism is uh and um you know i also read this one here um we should all be feminists and uh that is that has got a couple of sort of dictionary definitions of feminism and how feminism is just about um having equal rights and both genders having equal rights and um Roxane Gay talks a lot about the fact that she feels like she's a bad feminist because she shaves her legs and she likes to wear dresses and her favourite colour is pink. Um, but I, I, I really identified this because I identify myself as a feminist and I shave my legs and my favourite colour is pink and I love wearing dresses. Um, but it, it's funny because a lot of the time, being a, a teacher, I've um, come up with this come up against this a lot of the time how you know children in particular have a different view of what fem feminism means and the children that I teach are just getting to that age where they see that difference forming between the genders and see the way the different genders are treated and so it's a topic that I talk about a lot with them and they ask me if I'm a feminist and I say yes and we have this whole discussion around you know women's rights and where women's rights came from and you know I had a child ask me if I was a suffragette which was interesting because they obviously have no concept of how old I am um, but it was interesting that they asked me that and um, having you know found out what a suffragette was. Uh, this book is fantastic because it deals with, um, she talks about her love of the Hunger Games and she talks about how she as um, a professor and a lecturer has been treated differently to her male peers because of her gender. She talks about how she's been treated differently during Scrabble tournaments because of her gender. Um, I love Scrabble so I absolutely love that section. I will be rereading that section. also love the Hunger Games so this is just, it's such a, a you feel like she's talking to you on, on a one-to-one -one basis, on your level, it feels like a real person has told this book. It doesn't feel like it's somebody completely unreachable. And yet she's this amazing advocate for uh, women's rights. She has a new book out called Difficult Women, which I am just about to start. Uh, and I'm very excited for that one. So uh, Roxanne Gay, this one, and Difficult Women definitely ones to read. This little book that I mentioned a moment ago is um, based on a TED talk that she did. She's This is the author of Americana. Um, so I'm going to go and find that TED talk and definitely listen to that TED talk. Um, but this is a great little kind of intro if you're kind of looking into feminist reads and books that deal with the topic of feminism. This is a great intro because it's really short, 50 pages long, very small pages, very big text. Um, but it kind of covers everything. It covers the fact that she gave, um, a, I think it was a, somebody doing valet parking, a tip and the man that was with her was thanked rather than her because whoever took the tip assumed that the money had come from the man and not from her. The fact that uh, in Nigeria, women can't go into bars on their own because the people assume that they're prostitutes and so they have to wait outside and ask men to take them in as if they're their guest. Um, it also talks about um, the way gender roles are taught and it kind of, I found it really reassuring. As I say, as an educator, the role of feminism has come up a lot in my <coughs> teaching and the the dealings that I've had with my pupils and you know the the things that I'm sort of teaching and trying to show them and get them to learn is 
you know, the, the equality and the genders being equal and, and not assuming that because you like pink, you, you must be a girl. Um, it's wonderful. My favourite colour is pink and all the children that I taught um, know that my favourite colour is pink. And um, I had one of my male pupils came, came up to me at the end of one of my maths lessons and uh, whispered in my ear, I also like pink. And I kind of, I like the fact that, you know, he was able to admit that and able to say that. And I've had, you know, other boys that have said, oh yeah, miss, I really like pink as well. And I like the fact that even just that one little thing is kind of breaking it down. But more feminist reads. My first feminist read that I read, I don't have a physical copy of because I've lent it to someone because they have to read it. Um, and that's How to Be a Woman by... Um, Catelyn Moran, uh, just an amazing book, so, so funny. She deals with the issues that women face from the, you know, the smallest to the biggest issues or the, the issues which might seem small but are actually really big and um, she deals with them in a sensitive way but a hilarious way as well. Her, her way of speaking is so frank and open and honest and she's since come out with another book that has essays on various different topics and deals with them in the exact same way um, but that's that was my kind of starting point into reading about feminism and so um, that one is a massive recommendation and I think I'd really like to reread that one sometime soon. Another book that um, I listened to on audiobook um, but I obviously have a physical copy of because I want to have a physical copy of this and um, that is Everyday Sexism by Laura Bates. Um, this started as a project you can still find the Everyday Sexism account on Twitter and uh, this deals with literally everyday sexism, what it means, what impact it has on women, what impact it has on girls. Um, again, deals with the issues of like what being a feminist is and the stigma surrounding being a feminist and the fact that men don't feel that they can say they can be feminists and just everything surrounding that and she's since come up with Girl Up, which I have not read yet, but I will be reading very soon. I don't know why I haven't read it yet, but having just finished Bad Feminist, I really want to read this one next. Um, and yeah, her writing, again, very frank, very open, very honest, but also realistic, not kind of saying things for the sake of saying things. Um, and so these two, this author, along with Roxane Gay, Catelyn Moran, and we should all be feminists, definitely, definitely point us to read. Um, there's a lot of books that are fiction and not non-fiction that deal very well with the subject of feminism, but I really just wanted to focus on the non-fiction books that I've read today. Um, one that I read that I didn't like as much, I've ended up not kind of reviewing it, I read it last year and that's Hot Feminist by Polly Vernon. Um, I kind of felt a little bit kind of preached at uh, in reading this book and I found it kind of made me feel guilty and um, kind of did make me feel like a bad feminist, uh, which none of these other books did. Um, and so that's why I kind of wouldn't recommend that one as much as I would recommend these ones. But these ones, Laura Bates, Roxanne Gay, Catelyn Moran, amazing books. I haven't read any of the kind of classic feminist um, books, you know, you're kind of... Um, from the 60s, 70s, 80s, um, but they are definitely on my uh, TBR. I'm sorry this video is so long, but I really wanted to talk about these books and these issues in a video, so it is what it is. <laughs> I'll have another video for you soon, so I'll see you then. Bye!